Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi. 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 So I will first uh, introduce you to a little bit of uh, a PowerPoint, a few slides, just to explain about the Tai Chi. But usually, before I start, I like to challenge uh, participants with uh, two goals, with two uh, tasks. One is try to keep your spine straight when you sit. So it's amazing how, um, if you look around, most people sit like that. So, you know, so I said there's three methods to, to uh, reverse this. And, and you have to understand that when you sit like this, you only utilize a third of your lungs. When you sit like this, you compress the organs. When you sit like this, you compress the vertebrates. So lack of oxygen, circulation, digestive systems are crouched. So, this is, so it's all about creating space. It's not just about a nice posture. It's also about creating sp space for the internal organs to function in the best way possible. So it's interesting how uh, in the West we say I'm strong and we point to the biceps. And in the East people say I'm strong and they point to here. How many people die of failure of the biceps? Not many. <laughs> so most, most of the problems are in the internal organs. So strength should be really measured in your internal organs. And if you want to know, that's part of the sign of the Buddha, is that he is abundant energy in the organ area, and it symbolizes health. It doesn't symbolize food eating. <laughs> One Buddha does symbolize the food and eating. It's called Happy Buddha. But the other ones, it's all about abundant energy in the organs and, and uh, vitality through the organs. So when I say sit straight, uh, there's two tricks. One is, of course, to be independent. So you move away from the back of the seat and you try to sit independently with your spine straight. It's harder. It will take a few months, but then you'll strengthen the muscles between the pelvis and the ribs and you'll be able to just sit like this. I remember in the 80s and uh, mid-80s when you look around, it was even worse because now there's more awareness of posture. And every now and then you see someone sit straight. And right now you know, oh, that's a dancer. So dancers always would carry themselves that way. And over time and, and, uh, and knowledge, more and more people are aware of it. Uh, so the second trick, which is a little easier, you move all the way to the back of the chair. And you use the back of the chair like support. Okay, so that's the second trick. And the third trick um, is, is a little more obnoxious in certain areas, but you can go like this. So this is, all those three are better than this. That's the worst one. Okay, so you try as much as you can. I'm not going to tell you I'm sitting like this all day everywhere I go. I try to do the best I can. That's the bottom line. I say if you can do 70%, 70 to 80% of what you set up, that's still very high a, a rate of success. So that's a lot right there. So first thing I challenge you is throughout my uh, PowerPoint is to sit with your spine straight. The second thing that I, I challenge you is the uh, breathing. So if you look around and if you walk around, you'll realize that most people, they don't really breathe deep. So we don't, how often do you go Very rare. Even if I walk, I, I don't really need to take a deep breath. I can walk and be a shallow breather. So once I start running, maybe then I stimulate the lungs. But with age and health conditions and different stories, not everybody can run. Like my wife was joking today. She said, ha-ha, when I see those people running, I say, that's not for me anymore because of the, we tried a few times she, and the knee hurts. And you know, so she said, I'm going back to yoga. I'm going to start doing my yoga more intensely and forget this running because she tried a few times. And it's not necessarily what works for every age, for every condition, for every body type. So I joke. I say, if you don't run after your food every day or you don't run away, run away from other villages and you don't do cardiovascular four times a week, 40 minutes for over 4.5 on the treadmill, then you're a shallow breather. So the next thing you need to do is make a conscious decision. And eventually I have a joke. I say it's like the Rami parrot that say, breathe deep, breathe deep. And you have to make a conscious decision. And you have to say, I'm going to start breathing deep. And then you just say, 
and you fill up the lungs and you empty the lungs and you keep doing it. And if you read Judah Folkman's theories of oxygen and, and all the food that we're looking for with anti-oxygen elements and stuff, this is a, a part, an element that is missing. Just taking deep breaths and saturate your red blood system with oxygen by just taking those deep breaths over and over. But I tell you the truth, you're going to forget. You're going to say, wow, that sounds logical. That sounds good. I want to do it. But you're going to forget, like everybody else, including me. So I created tricks for myself, and you have to create those tricks for you. For example, when I wait for the email. So I say, okay, might as well. A few deep breaths. Before I start eating, some people like they do a prayer. I, I, I go, oh, wait. And I take a deep breath and I say, okay, I'm trying to maintain while I'm eating. Uh, uh, waiting in the red light and on and on here and there. So you find those tricks. When do you breathe deep? And before you know it, you have those places and you remind you and you start doing it yourself. So the deep breathing through the nose, in and out. And... Like you work the lungs like they're a bellow or like an accordion. Yeah, in and out. And that's just the beginning. There's a whole science to the breath in both uh, Qigong, Tai Chi, and in yoga. In all those philosophies, there's a whole science of breath, of practicing different postures of breath. Different areas of the lungs get filled up. You learn to put air into different parts of the lungs. And before you know it, you develop your lungs and you have a much uh, larger lung capacity and more oxygen flowing through your system and that if, if that doesn't convince you for health reasons so at least if you want smoother skin so breathing will lead to smoother skin because the skin is a living breathing organism so the the more you breathe eventually it will reach all the way to the outer layers to the skin so so two two goals until i finish the the powerpoint presentation one Keep your spine upright. Two, while I talk, keep working the lungs. Maybe in the beginning you'll do five seconds in and five seconds out. Maybe by the end of me talking you'll be able to do eight, nine, and ten seconds in and ten seconds out. So the breath grows bigger and bigger the more you do it because the muscles around the lungs are very elastic. So the more you demand from them, they'll say, oh, I need to grow, I need to expand, and the bigger they expand. So it's just a matter of practice. And if you think about it, that's a big common uh, principle within all the Eastern philosophies. So spine and the trunk and breathing deep. The third one is the mind, but we'll get into it when I, uh, the more I, uh, then we start. So